Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today we're gonna to be looking at Bamboo Lab's newest printer just announced today, the A1. Yes, not of steak sauce, it's a 3D printer. So they sent me this to check out. Uh, I've been testing it for the past week or so. Um, you're gonna see a ton of coverage and reviews today from all your favorite 3D printing channels. Uh, what I'll be doing is going over some of its features, comparing it with its siblings, uh, the A1 Mini, as well as the P and the X line of Bamboo Lab printers and giving you my thoughts and impressions about this uh, rather than a full deep dive. But let's jump in and give you a little bit of context on where we are at the end of 2023 and the world of FDM printing and specifically the Bamboo Lab ecosystem. Because last year they kind of revolutionized FDM printing with the release of the X1 and now the, now the X1C. That was a core XY 3D printer, extremely fast, extremely reliable, really user-friendly uh, front end, and plenty of updates I've made over the past, over 12 months now, to make it this really workhorse, high-end workhorse of a 3D printer, north of $1,000. Everyone I know from makerspaces to prop makers to Adam loves FDM printing now, largely because of the innovations brought to market by Bamboo Labs X1C, and then some of those spilling into other printer makers as well. Although we acknowledge that core XY design as well as a slicer software inherited by a lot of the innovations made by the open source community too. So since then, Bamboo Lab also released the P1 line and P1P and P1S. Those are basically the same as the X1, but a little more bare bones, no walls on the P1P, much more affordable price point, and they've cut the price point in that. So that's a $600 printer. You can get it for 600 bucks, basically the same performance as the X1, and you can modify it yourself print up all the accessories and the like. Uh, in September of this year though, they also surprised everyone with their first bed singer, the A1 Mini. I reviewed that printer. It was really interesting at $300, really compelling as your, your first printer had input shaping, had solid uh, metal construction, linear rails. Yes, it was a cantilevered uh, X-axis, and in my printer that did fall out of alignment, they had to redo, but also had multi-material printing. You could buy it in a bundle with their AMS light. Um, and as a entry-level printer, that one was seven inches by seven inches by seven inches build volume, or 180 millimeters cube, uh, really compelling as an alternative to something like Prusa's uh, The Mini. There. Now they've continued with the A1 line with the standard A1. This is just the A1 printer and it looks and operates a lot like the A1 Mini. So you have the similar, the hot end here, the extruder with a 0.4 millimeter uh, nozzle that comes standard with, but very quick and swappable hot end. So you can swap in 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, or a uh, hardened steel hot end super easily. Uh, it does flow management, it detects the filament, uh, it has input shaping, so very fast prints up to 500 millimeters per second. Acceleration isn't as fast here as on the Core XY printers, so the print speeds are about 30% of those if you're talking about single material printing. Uh, but the big difference here is that it has the full bed size. In fact, this print plate, this print plate is the exact same one as you would have the texture build plate on the X1 and the P1. So this is 256 millimeters cube or 10 inches cube. So your build volume here is 10 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches. Magnetically attaches here. And in fact, if you recall the X1, the P1, you couldn't build that full build volume because you had an obstruction on the lower left. On the A1, you can get the full build volume right out of the box. So it actually technically has a slightly larger build volume than the X1C uh, printers. It also has, like the A1 Mini, motor noise cancellation. This was a feature unique to the A1 line. Uh, the Bamboo Lab engineers, many of them ex-DJI uh, drone engineers, they have a lot of expertise in tuning the fine motors that, go, that went into the drones, and they had the ability in the A1 Mini to, through a calibration process, to have the motors tuned so they would be basically very quiet. I wouldn't say whisper quiet when you're in the same room, but if you're in a, the room next to the 3D printer, you can't tell that there's 3D, 3D printing going on, other than the chirping and the musical notes that the printer sings and makes when that print starts. That's a really novel and nice feature that's been unique to the A1 
series until actually this week. So the A1 has motor noise cancellation, but also interestingly, this week ahead of this launch, Bamboo Lab updated the firmware for the P1 and the X1 line of printers. So there's motor noise cancellation on those printers as well. There's a lot of parity in terms of features, so I'm really glad to see they're not just segmenting that off to a, a different print line, but also puts this in a kind of a weird position of where the A1 lives, because it's not a Coral XY printer, it's slightly slower, the acceleration is half as such. There are some of the, uh, some of the quirks of it being a bed slinger. So for example, the A1 Mini and the A1, even though there is a stated footprint of the, of the printer itself, because of the way it's designed, the x-axis moving here, and the bed moving being the y-axis, that's the bed slinging part, well you actually, when you put this in its space, you need more room in front of it and room behind it to actually have it operate. So you need to have that clearance in the front and the back. Um, that means that it takes up a little bit more space than the equivalent print volume on a, on a Core XY printer. And when you factor in things like the AMS multi-material switching system, one of my complaints about the AMS Lite that was with the A1 Mini was that it had that huge footprint as well. So you had a printer that was far bigger than that A4 sheet of paper that they said on their spec sheet, plus you also had the AMS Lite that needed to sit next to it really close. Thankfully, on the A1, I have the A1's AMS Lite actually mounted above it. So Bamboo Lab is releasing files that you can print to mount this on top of the x-axis support here, this rail here. Clamps on securely, there's actually the same type of mount that you'd have if you're using a single spool, and it sitting right there means that it's just space on the z-axis. Much better than it sitting to the left or the right of the printer. One quirk I also want to mention that is unique to this printer, it's not part of the setup process, is be mindful of this power cable that goes to the extruder. If you don't have it secured, it's actually very easy for the cable to catch on the print bed as it's printing, and I had for a couple times it getting caught, thankfully did not damage the printer, didn't tear the cable off, but the prints of course failed and the print bed got caught in here and there was misalignment along the y-axis. So make sure you have that power cable secured where you have your PTFE tubing here. Other quirks and design features, it has the same nozzle cleaning system. So it wipes the nozzle in the back and then when you have the extra filament that you have bit out at the beginning of every print or when you're changing materials, it kicks that off to the side. It uses the same wiping system right here. It's a pretty nicely designed system and it actually has that convenience factor. You never have to go in and pull off the little bit of stringiness at the top, at the end of the, the hot end at every print. Love that convenience. But there's no elegant way to catch that wasteful uh, little bit of um, uh, extrusion uh, at the beginning of every print. Uh, not like the P1 or the X1 lines where you have the, the poop chute in the back and they can put a waste bucket there. Here, putting a waste bucket or a cup next to it works some of the time, but because of how uneven those that filament gets kicked off, um, I find that it's still not a great solution. I can actually have it over the side of a table and then have a waste bucket behind it or I'm just kind of sweeping it up every so often. Disadvantages from this with uh, of a bed slinger compared to a Core XY is also a little bit of less reliability when you're printing really tall objects really quickly. So something to be mindful of is because you have the X and Y axis moving pretty quickly, including the bed itself moving very quickly. If you have a narrow tower that you're printing, and you're printing all the way up to that 10 inches, uh, you could get um, some print failures or just instability. You're gonna wanna include a brim on that, or even maybe some glue on your print, uh, some, some, a glue stick on your print build plate to, to lock that down. Um, you notice on a test print like this right here, when it got to the top of the tower, it just wasn't as clean uh, printing at max speed just because you had both the X and Y axis moving pretty quickly and the bed itself just moving very, very fast as it, as it was getting to those, that top part here. 
Um, it also has a camera feature. So, you know, it ties into the, the Bamboo Lab ecosystem, uh, that its application. You can send prints over a network. You can also plug it in via SD card, uh, no LAN capability here. But if you're printing from the Bamboo Lab uh, Bamboo Handy app, or if you're printing from the Bamboo Studio, you can monitor the prints with a camera. But like the A1 Mini, I found the camera system lacking here. There's a little bit of light, but the angle where the camera is as it moves up just doesn't make for graceful time lapses. It lets you know, uh, you know, what the state of the print is. You know, whether you have a you know, spaghetti failure or not but it's not nearly as responsive. It's a little bit laggy and the frame rate isn't, still isn't as good as what you get on the P1 and the X1 line of printers. So at the end of the day, the, the presence of the A1, the launch of the A1, really creates an interesting range of products in the Bamboo Lab ecosystem of printers. You have on the entry level $300 uh, for the A1 Mini, that's without the AMS Lite. And the A1 is actually just $100 more than that. Going into testing this printer, you know, I kind of it kind of felt like the mi awkward middle child of 3D printing because like why wouldn't you just spend an extra $200 and go for the Core XY printing of the P1P and then upgrade from there? But actually think that that price difference, uh, the price difference that matters more is the price difference between this and the A1 Mini. And I think what this printer does is actually makes the A1 Mini much less attractive. The, it's well worth spending the $100 extra for the bigger print volume and for the ability, if you want to use AMS Lite to have that mounted on the top, than it is, uh, even as your very first printer, than to go with the A1 Mini. Um, so I feel like if you invest in the A1 Mini, you eventually might want a bigger print volume, and the A1 just seems like that sweet spot at an entry level. 400 bucks, that's less than half the price of the Prusa Mark IV kit that doesn't come pre-assembled, and this comes working out of the box in about you know, 30 minutes time, if that, after with, with some calibration. Uh, the amount of support that Bamboo has offered in terms of firmware updates, software updates, app updates, the things they've done with Maker World, which is their repository of 3D print files, has made that whole ecosystem that much more compelling. And the, there's a very strong community you know, on Reddit, on Discord, for people supporting each other using these printers. And that's been the biggest change this year with 3D printing, with FEM printing, whether it's with these printers, whether it's with you know ones from Crowdy or Elegoo or even from Prusa. The, Incorporation of input shaping has made printing that much faster. And just the flood of new users, new people going into printing and not having to spend time maintaining their printers, spending more time actually printing things, sharing files, designing files, has made 3D printing as a hobby that much more exciting today. I kind of wish that Bamboo Lab launched this back in September as opposed to the A1 Mini because I kind of feel bad for anyone who bought into the A1 Mini. We didn't know that they were going to launch the A1 at this compelling of a price point. $400 for this, $550 if you want to get the bundle with AMS Lite. I'm not as big of a fan of multi-material printing. I think still think at this point it's pretty wasteful to do it off of one extruder and having to purge with every color change. Um, but I use AMS Lite more as a kind of a holster for filaments. I have my four favorite colors at the moment, and it's very you know it's a, it's a convenience that I have not having to swap it out. But is that convenience? and the multi-material potential worth an extra 150 bucks, that it's up to you. I think if it, was, if it was up to me, I'd decide between $400 for the A1, or if I had $550 or $600 to spend, I'd go with the P1P and go for that upgrade to go full core XY. So there you have it. That's the A1. It's uh, shipping soon, and you can order it today. We'll have links in, in the description below. Uh, if you have questions about this printer, about FDM printing uh, in general, I'd love to know in the comments below what your printing with and uh, what things you're printing this holiday season. But thanks so much for watching. I'm Norm from Tested and I'll see you next time. Bye. I can't thank you enough for supporting us by watching the channel. If you've been to our merch store, you might want to head there again because we are always updating our roster with new products. Here is the anime inspired Tested logo in Japanese, my, one of my all time favorite new designs. Uh, we're also selling Tested mugs and Tested hats. Oh, and if you want a cup of tea, we're selling that too. Tested-store.com. Tested-store.com. <laughs>